वेलकम टू चाय पे खर्चा वेर वी हैव कॉन्वर्सेशंस ऑन पर्सनल फाइनेंस अमंग फोर एन आर आई प्रोफेशनल्स वर्किंग एट टेक फॉर्म्स थिंक ऑफ दीज लाइक वाटर कूलर चैट्स यू हैव एट द ऑफिस ओनली दिस टाइम यू विल हैव ईशान माधवेश रोहित एंड सिद्धार्थ एज कलीग्स यू विल बी लिसनिंग इन टू बिफोर वी गेट स्टार्टेड अट क्विक डिस्कलेमर वी आर नॉट फाइनेंशियल एक्सपर्ट्स The content provided in this podcast is for informational and educational purposes only. Always consult with a qualified financial professional if you need financial advice. Welcome everyone to another episode of Chai Pe Kharcha. We are going to talk about whether it's a good idea to. associate yourself with a financial advisor investment advisor and what are the pros and cons should you do it should you not do it what are we doing in our own lives and we'll talk about all of that in this exciting episode of chai pe khatta let me start with ishan advisors yes or no have you ever are you currently dealing with an advisor have you ever dealt with an advisor what's your experience like so i've never had an advisor yeah. and i have not dealt with one this is based off my personal experience and having worked in a bank in some of the wealth advisors that we fight it's it's i mean there's there's nothing against people working at banks honestly great for you to have but the idea is people who don't have the kind of wealth you do should not be advising you what you should be doing with that wealth is is my first thought process second idea for me obviously was are they incentivized to really help me multiply my wealth or are they incentivized to sell me products that help them earn a commission and that has since the beginning since the time i have started earning it's been a question in my head where i don't necessarily feel like they are incentivized directly to help me so that has kind of kept me in staying away from from advices so people who haven't been there done that and people whose incentives are not aligned they shouldn't be acting as an advisor i mean because i I, I wouldn't take that as an advisor for myself god it fair enough fair enough said what about you i know that you have spoken about advisors in the past do you currently engage with an advisor what causes you to trust an advisor or not trust an advisor and how much of your money are you channeling through an advisor yeah so i yes i do engage with advisor my mutual funds go through him which is 20% of my portfolio why i engage with an advisor is i do not have the time to do the research myself and to a degree i do not have the knowledge or and interest to gain that so plus the advisor that i engage with is a friend and i have a degree of trust with him on top of that i've been with him for 6 years and he's given good returns when we all in all been positive for me though i i to just talk about what ishan mentioned on bank relationship manager or wealth manager i also agree that they it's not on the people themselves but the situations that they are put in that i think have them act not in the best interest of the customer but in the best interest of the bank generally is not i have a very very small anecdote connected to that so just a few weeks ago i was talking to a relationship manager slash wealth advisor from the bank where i have my salary account and they were trying to sell me a investment product which was basically i think etf or a index fund of some kind and actively managed by the way not a passive index fund and in their own sort of fact sheet which they were using for pitching it to me 
there was a section which compared the performance of that particular investment product with like mm-hmm. S&P 500 and other investment benchmarks. It was very clearly mentioned that over a one year, three year and five year period, the plain S&P 500 index fund had outperformed the investment product that they were trying to sell me. But I'm assuming that because obviously they are an employee of an organization, they are incentivized to sell certain products that their management tells them to. They were very passionate about like, yes, this is an amazing product. You'll get great returns, this and that. And then I obviously I didn't counter them in the moment, but later on, I was like very clearly, I was able to just send an email and say that, hey, I don't think this works against this particular benchmark. So I, I'm not interested. But that gives an example of, I think, Ishan Siddharth, what both of you referred to around the incentive alignment problem and a lot of mis-selling that happens in the space. Something that everyone needs to be careful about when they choose to work with an advisor. Madhvesh, what about what about you? I know you are among the four of us. You are someone who has a very high exposure to equity. Have you ever worked with an advisor? Would you consider working with an advisor in future? Why or why not? So when I started my investment journey, it was like three to four years back. I wanted to like get my hands dirty. And I, I feel like that's the best way to learn things because it's not going to be a one, two year thing, but probably 15, 20 years. So I was completely against places at that point of time. And I also seen a lot of people around me burning their hands when they work with an advisor. Actually, they get like really informed advice, like very similar to what Ishan said. They were looking at their improvement rather than the client's perspective or their goals, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And having said that, as my purpose has also grown in terms of investment, I also foresee a time where I'll not be able to manage all my assets and give the time it needs of what I've been doing till now. So I am inclined towards advisors if, like as you said, they are unbiased. And they have certain incentives which makes it work for the client as well. Probably that would be a good way for me to like bring in an advisor. And one more additional point that has that I changed my mind recently is that let's say if you take an investment in small cap companies, etc., where there needs to be a lot of movement in terms of where you are investing and what you are investing at different points of time. They could. I feel like and the value of an advisor is a lot at there. Rather than just picking some large cap companies where it's like quite easy to pick them. So this is my current state of mind regarding our cases. In my case, I think I have been engaging with one advisor or the other for at least six or seven years. So I think I'm currently on my third advisor, which I, I feel like it's a relationship that is expected to go on for the next at least a decade of my investment life. I completely agree with the incentive alignment problem. Like it's it's very difficult to find an advisor that is unbiased and who has your best interests in their mind. Things that worked out in my favor, someone who is an alum of my business school is a wealth advisor. So there is a lot of institutional trust that that person carries within the circles that I am part of. So it was very easy for me to engage in a relationship with that person. They understand people from my specific background because they advise other other alums from the same business school. Something in terms of alignment is their own personal assets are significant enough for them to not have to work. So they do this out of a passion and out of a joy. And they do a lot of things which I expect to do sometime later in my career, in my personal life as well. So they've taken certain decisions about their life, which I hope to emulate at some point in the future, which kind of again goes to the point, Ishan, that you were saying earlier, that for people who haven't been there, done that, shouldn't be the ones advising us, which is, I'm lucky enough to find someone where They are at a level which is way beyond what I am today. And they are there to sort of share their advice and their journey uh, around this. I think the point around being able to do an in-depth research of different investment options, I absolutely don't have the time, nor the expertise, nor the inclination. Like I don't have any desires to go that deep into researching different investment options. 
so i try to outsource that work to my advisor and historically they have done a great job the last piece that i can share from my personal thing is when i think about judging the success of an advisor i think there are two parts right one is investment advice the other is what you might call as financial advice which is not like investment advice is a part of overall financial advice like how should you structure your overall portfolio how much should you stay in cash how much should you based on your personal situation if we are in we are nris how much should you keep in india how much should you keep outside of the country if you have certain tax advantages in a different country versus india how should you gear up your portfolios according to that so i think an advisor who is a true expert should be able to guide you through all of these different questions and also try to align your investments based on your personal situation and life stage right so for example i have some dependents that i need to take into consideration when planning my investments so my advisor helps me put number to that thought and say that hey this responsibility or this liability that you are carrying converts into x amount in terms of rupees or dollars and this is the amount that you should park in this particular vehicle in order to safeguard that particular responsibility and so on and so forth right i feel like a pure vanilla investment advisor will just say ki yeah go ahead in mutual fund mein dal do ya aisa index fund mein dal do ye stock khareed lo and that kind of stuff a holistic financial advisor is what i prefer who can advise not just about ki kaun sa mutual fund ya kaun sa stock lena hai बट आपका जो टोटल अमाउंट ऑफ मनी है उसका आप क्या करो बेस्ड ऑन योर लाइफ योर सिचुएशन एंड दैट काइंड ऑफ एडवाइस इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट सो मे बी दैट ओपन अप द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन एंड मे बी स्टार्ट आई स्टार्ट विथ यू बिकॉज यू आर दन बीन वर्किंग विद एन एडवाइजर वेर वुड यू गो टू फाइंड एन एडवाइजर इफ इट वर लाइक अ कम्प्लीटली न्यू यू टूडे यही सवाल मैं पूछने वाला था इसी में ट्रस्ट इन द रिगार्ड कि ये धोखा नहीं देगा और कुछ मिसअलाइनमेंट नहीं है इसके इंसेंटिव से दैट ट्रस्ट एंड देर इज सेकेंड ट्रस्ट वेर ही इज नॉलेजेबल इनफ कि ये मिसअलाइनि मलिशियसली नहीं बट नॉन मलिशियसली भी कोई ऐसे एडवाइज ना देते रहे जिससे अपने को लॉस हो टू थिंग एंड फ्रेंड्स और फैमिली से साथ पहला वाला पॉइंट तो कवर हो जाता है सेकेंड पॉइंट ऑल sometimes does not get told do you go on it you have to keep evaluating keep evaluating ha samay samay pe mulyankan karo apne see the counter point again to that sir is the yeah when you start getting into financial conversations with your near and dear ones if you go to a relative and say i know you manage your money well give me advice and i go take my money and manage it from yours so it can lead to a Lead to very difficult conversations in the future, also, because given that they are they are close to uh, money, always kind of brings some uh, some friction at some point of time. See the the point where where I am aligned with uh, you and Rohit on a financial advisor is if their money is where their wealth is, that is a huge positive. You would want to see them also invest along with you into something, right? but along with that i would ideally want to see that they have a long track record of delivering with them with putting the money where they where i mean wherever they're putting their money and where they will put my money because if again if it's someone who's my peer who's invested for say 5 6 years have done well in the last 5 6 years that's a great start but does that give me a guarantee of great results over the next 20 years i cannot be so sure and if if the portfolio starts making a loss in the next 5 years will my friendship with that person stay if they've lost my money that that is the bigger question is my is losing my friendship worth the entire thing right 
हाँ तो वो वो आई अग्री विद योर पॉइंट कि भाई फ्रेंडशिप या रिलेशनशिप में देर कुड बी इश्यूज तो गो इन विद दैट माइंड सेट कि बोथ ऑफ यू एग्री कर पर सेकेंड पॉइंट डेट यू मैंशन कि छः साल अच्छा परफॉर्मेंस किया डज दैट गारंटी कि आगे भी अच्छा परफॉर्मेंस हो वो तो सर मेरे हिसाब से वॉर एंड बफे भी गारंटी नहीं कर सकते कि उसका परफॉर्मेंस आगे देखता हो अग्रीड but see, but see with a with a with a buffet i can i i can have a fight tomorrow if, if my portfolio is at a loss i can call him up and i can scream at him with a friend it will be a very awkward call and that's i mean i'm not saying what you're saying is wrong i'm just saying that that is another thought process that you should have if you're reaching out to someone close for this but i i do like the idea of of having someone close who you can have these conversations with about your finances and also take advice as an undergraduate but a difference between someone managing your money for you versus taking advice uh, that also i just want to call out this there are portfolio managers who like like buffett is so would take money in his partnership in his early days and manage money for other people now you can invest in berkshire if you want buffett to see manager one but it's a that's a different thing versus if you just call if you have someone trusted who you can call up and say hey i want to invest in x what do you think that's that is a relationship That is definitely worth having. एक और चीज जो कर सकते हैं, you don't want to spoil your relationship with your friends and family. Told of your friends, friend of family, आप उसको फोन करके गाली भी मार सकते हो. Three degrees of separation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I think in in terms of just concluding this topic. i feel like the general consensus is there is a value and a place for advisors but as with everything else there needs to be some sort of a due diligence that needs to happen when you pick on an advisor one thing that i can definitely say is there is this concept of a fee only advisor and there is this concept of a asset based fee advisor so ek taraf mein kya hota hai ki wo aapse fixed fee lega aur wo aapka pura portfolio aur sab kuch karke dega दूसरी तरफ में क्या होता है कि वो आपसे पैसा नहीं लेगा बट लेट्स से यू पुट दस लाख रुपया विद दिस वन पर्सन देन दे विल चार्ज अ परसेंटेज ऑफ दैट दस लाख रुपया फ्रॉम यू एवरी ईयर तो जनरली स्पीकिंग ये सेकंड वाला मॉडल में ही ज्यादातर इट्स लाइक अ रिस्की मॉडल वेयर इंसेंटिव मिस अलाइनमेंट है एजेंडा ऑफ द एडवाइजर इज गेट मोर एंड मोर एसेट्स अंडर हिज बकेट प्रॉफिट मिले ना मिले उसको उसका कमीशन मिलता रहेगा पी वाले मॉडल में क्या होता है कि आपको अगर उस एडवाइजर से फायदा मिल रहा है यू विल गो अगेन एंड यू विल गिव हिम हिज फिक्स्ड फी एंड देन यू विल गेट मोर रिटर्न्स एंड यू विल काइंड ऑफ गो विद दैट साइकिल सो दैट इज इफ यू डोंट हैव फ्रेंड्स एंड फैमिली हु आर एक्सपर्ट्स इन दिस स्पेस अ फी ओनली एडवाइजर माइट बी अ गुड प्लेस टू स्टार्ट जस्ट गूगल इट एंड आई एम श्योर डिपेंडिंग ऑन वेयर यू आर लिविंग अ लिस्ट कम अप समवेयर All right, everyone. Thanks so much for sharing your valuable thoughts on investment advisors and your own personal styles. What to look out for? I think because this is such an interesting topic, we might actually call out our investment advisors as guests on this podcast in a future episode, hopefully soon enough. We will be back on this topic. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for joining. Have a great day.